Welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. The other day I spent half an hour in a parking lot trying to make a key for this silly little tiny cam lock. Five disc, three cut, no big deal. I've got Instacode, I've got HPC, I've got a Silka Futura, I've got a laptop, I've got it all ready to go, but unfortunately it still took me half an hour. Very frustrating. So I thought I'd do this little video because I spent a little bit of time nutting it out and sorting out the problems and I'll, um, I'll highlight them in the video so that way you won't make the same mistakes and also we're going to go over the Silka Futura Codemaker and I'm going to tell you on how to use it and how to use it quickly. So this is a little tiny cam lock that caused me all this trouble. I went to the car, I found it on Instacode without a problem. There it is there, BMB, simple cam lock, three depths and uh, five spacing. Nothing nothing special whatsoever. The difference is that I wasn't able to actually send this information to the Silka Futura. If it was a Silka Unicode I could have just pushed enter and it would have sent the information across but unfortunately it doesn't. Although it is in the menu you cannot um, send depth, space and data down to the machine which is very unusual. When I spoke to um, Instacode they said that's the way Silka wants it so we'll just leave it at that for now. So you can actually try and connect and you can use the browser on your computer to connect using TCP, IP and all of that using a browser. So that can be done quite easily but you cannot actually just send that little tiny information across. So you actually have to buy this uh, Silka code, code Maker which I purchased. I purchased this because if I don't have a key and I, I want that key or I'm going to be doing a lot of them it's easy just to plot it in and to do it. Plotting it in I've done on many machines and it wasn't that hard. A lot of the times you just start off at the shoulder, you put your first depth in as you see is 500, your second depth in is 745, third depth 990, etc, etc, and you do your spacings and you select your type of cut. Now these are the space and depth that you get on Instacode and they actually turned up wrong. Right here the space, the space on the card is 545 but you actually have to put it at about 540 and give it a little room in front of the cut, if not your cut's going to be at the top of the top of the peak. The next thing is uh, the spacing I found is better to minus 5 as we said that way the cuts in the middle of the valley so the right spacing and the wrong spacing okay basically instead of doing the Instacode way of going 500, 745, 990 blah 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 you've actually got to start from your shoulder give it your first measurement and then the difference between your first measurement and your second measurement which was 245, third, cut, uh, third spacing 245, fourth spacing 245 and so on but I like to uh, minus 5 off so it gave it a bit of room, if not it's top of the tip. The next thing is the actual cutters. Now it um, tells you what angle do you want to, um, what angle do you want to cut at. So if you're too shallow, the key's going to get too stuck. If you're too wide, you, your cut is going to wipe out the next cut next to it. So I found 90 degrees to be pretty good for disc locks and about 60 degrees for pin tumbler locks, which is going off the HBC um, disc angles. Okay, so with the actual space and depth, so the actual real depth, which I put in as the wrong one there, is 650. Uh, sorry, there's a little slight variation there. I basically had to cut it, move it up and down, use a vernier calculus to get to get it right, and that's how I managed to do it. Because if you put in 650, it might be 654. The next thing you uh, might want to know of is just the cutters. When it starts asking about these things, the cutter standard is the 01F, the vice standard. 01V, then it'll ask you to select your side you want to clamp the key on, but you do also have that option if you've selected it, use any clamp, and that way the laser will actually read the key height and know what it's got in it. Um, yeah, and you also do have to tell it the height of the key as well when using code. So once you get all those little bits of information, it's not generally that hard. I've um, gone through now and I'll show you uh, how to set up a. All right, now so let's get going. Let's make a let's make a key card. So the first thing you do is you just go into the main menu, you go to options, down on the bottom left, then you go all the way down, bottom left, code maker, big blue button in the middle, user card management, click on that, bottom left, add card, click on that, standard key, dimple key, take note, only two options, standard key it is. So from here we have card number automatic lock system so now we give it an, a name demo in this uh, in this instance and push enter key length dimension um, now this is basically left to right how thick that blade is so that way it knows how deep it can go and cut example there you go type of key now single sided double sided or double sided where the cuts are not in the same spot basically so that's that little help button there. That's all pretty straightforward. Nothing to report there. Most pe any locksmith will be able to get past that bit without a problem. Now clamp, that's the actual whole clamp. 
and it will only give you one option for that which is fine and that's the one we showed you in the past there 01B side of the clamp now you can pick A, B, C or D but remember you've got that option of automatic on there as well so but pick the one that's best suits the key giving it the most amount of meat A in this, uh, in this instance reference so do you want to hold the key by the tip or do you want to hold it by the shoulder if it's got a shoulder then you select head they don't call it shoulder they call it head and then you use tip stop zero which is as you can see in the uh, image on the left that's zero so it's basically just your shoulder guide now with the actual shape of the cuts we just pick normal and that's more like your plunge so just pick plunge and that should be fine they do have different ones there uh, easy and smooth and things but then their terminology is different to HPC so it's a bit confusing alright so now we're going into the depths now so I've started off with my first uh, we're doing depths yeah we're doing depths first depth and the thing is with the depths is they go from the top of the key in top of the key in for the next one so you don't have to do what you have to do with the spacings so you just go as normal there you go remember uh, your first one cannot be bigger than the actual key blade otherwise it'll come up with an error Okay, so now we're actually going to do the spacing. Now this is one thing that I got wrong a few times. The cut base is actually the bottom of the valley. So that needs to be at about 100. If you look on Instacode, it will actually show you a little um, measurement there. So if you take note of that, then you can put it in. Also take note of the spacing. Um, starts off at 500, then plus 200, plus 200, plus 200. It doesn't go 500, 700, 900. That was another thing that cost me a bit of time. But um, cut base definitely cost me a bit of time and cost me a few keys. If you have a cut base of one, two, three, four, and five, you're going to get a, a really tight. Um, basically, it's going to be a V cut instead of a U shaped type cut. The next thing is this um, preview option here, just down here on the right. Click on that because that'll actually show you all your information, and it's good to actually have that information and then look over it just to make sure that everything's correct. So once you have your card, what I like to do is I like to put in some deep cuts and some high cuts. Basically just that way I can see whether or not the machine's going to take it. It actually can sense if it's going to be wiping out its other cuts using the angles that you've provided and the cuts that you've provided. So in this scenario, if it says it's okay, it's okay, which means your angles are right, your spacing's right, and it can actually produce a key to those heights. That's that use any clamp button, I'm just clicking on and off there. Turn it on, you can use any clamp. Turn it off, you can use the clamp that's selected um, on the actual card that you've created. Now with the actual shape of the key, normal is your plunge, then you've got laser, and then uh, easy, which is like laser barbed. There's a few of them there, they're definitely not as easy uh, to understand as the HPC terminology, but they're there. Just use normal until you want to experiment with the other ones. That seems to work pretty well. Okay, so just do a quick wrap up here. So this is for this code maker is for single, double sided, and dimple keys. But it's real funny how you can't plot a track key on it. If you can plot um, a dimple key which has inner and outer pins, right? So there's five cuts, multiple depths. So you got to plot five positions for the inner, five positions for the outer, plus also the side has five cuts as well. So it's 15 cuts you've got to plot for a dimple key, but you can't plot a single sided or um, double sided track key. Very interesting. The next thing that's interesting is that um, Instacode doesn't talk to it, and um, that's the way they wanted it. For some reason, I mean, you can buy a 15 year old or 20 or 30 year old Unicode, and you can send data straight down to it, and it works. So that's uh, quite interesting. And the reason they do that is because they want the repeat business, the, the updates. And um, the reason I bought CodeMaker is so that I wouldn't have to rely on their updates. Um, I don't want to have to keep asking, you know, for updates and paying for them when they're not needed. When I had the HPC Shark, I had no troubles with updates, never updated once, and that machine was 10 or 15 years old, or I don't know how old it was, but it was, uh, it was, it wasn't a brand new spanking machine. And it's all, I've also got one of the very first Unicodes as well, and I use it every day, and I just push enter on uh, Instacode, and it sends the data straight across, even though the, the data and the data space and depth is not in the database of the machine it's just a simple push away and it works so obviously it's a money making exercise now I just want to take you uh, one more thing over the actual um, my machine I purchased and why I need to have code maker 
because I actually imported my machine, um, I'm not wealthy enough to actually be able to buy it locally. And if you can see the figures on screen, you can see why. 22000 approximately to buy it locally. And I sourced my one and purchased it for about 12000 so there's a big difference. So I saved 9750 But before you go out and do this, I want you to take a few things into account. You get no help. If you go to your local supplier and need to buy it from them and pay them their $9,750 worth of profit, you're not going to get help. Uh, you're not going to get um, any type of warranty or anything like that from them being a local dealer. Um, you're going to be hard-pressed sending it back to the actual existing person you originally bought it from to um, get any type of warranty as well. I have heard of a few other locksmiths saying that, um, well I've heard it from one locksmith say that their Futura blew up and they had to send it back. So be pretty careful with your brass and things like that if you're doing what I'm doing and um, you know going without the extended warranty so to speak. You also need a friend in the US to be able to purchase this. They will not deal with you. You've got to deal with your local supplier and if you're in the US they'll deal with you but if you're not and you want to get it sent overseas they won't deal with you so that's the other thing they're bound to their own particular regions the dealers are one more thing to take into account is that you are risking twelve thousand dollars so if you were to do what i did you risk twelve thousand dollars to save close to ten thousand dollars so it's pretty much like putting uh putting your money on the casino table on black or red and giving it a spin and seeing where you land because anywhere along the lines you could lose that type of that type of money or it could go wrong and end up costing you um, more than the actual amount that I ended up paying so before you go sort of taking that chance take those things into consideration if you do buy locally you do have the dealer support you do have them help you out with the upgrades and um, attachments things along those lines so there are benefits with buying locally that's why as they say sometimes you have to pay the piper I'm saying that too, I'm pretty happy with my machine and I've had no troubles and that code so that um, code maker program allows me to keep keeping it up to date and relevant for my needs rather than relying on the dealer and the supplier to make more money when I tell them what my needs are. One thing I'm a little bit annoyed about is that you know you should be able to do track keys and they know that more cars are coming out than dimple keys and house standard uh, single and double sided keys so they know this and if you're going to buy a code machine um, they've got to allow you to be able to do a certain amount with it so when a new car comes out it's like oh here we go brand new car never seen it before oh amazing technology you need an update oh by the way that's an extra 250 bucks so they're going to do that um, whenever anything new comes out and with cars they seem to come out more than anything else so they all sat down at the big uh, big table there in uh, Silka Head office and said, oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll, hold, we'll hold back on the cars. So it's um, it's annoying. It's annoying when um, other key machines aren't kind of doing that. Anyway, hope this has been um, helpful for you and hope um, it saves you burning a few key blanks and saves a little bit of time making some cards. Leave some comments down below and thanks for watching.